Right, so I think I've made some more progress with this original Datron. This is the 1062, not the LS. We had the GPIB problem, it just wouldn't work, it's caused it to drip out all the time. I think I've found what's wrong. <sighs> You're not going to believe this. Right, power's turned on over here. If I turn this on, you see it now boots up. Does it work? I've got no idea. But at least now it's not dead. So yes, I fixed it. Anyone want to take any guesses what it was? I'll give you five seconds. Okay, time's up. If you haven't put it in the comments already, you're out of time. You lose. Yes, the EEPROM is the issue. When I took the EEPROM out, it would boot up. If I took out any other chip with the EEPROM in place, it didn't matter. It still would give the same fault. So I thought, that's weird, you know, it's, the EEPROM's right. And I had an issue with the other unit, I can't remember this one or the other one. One of them was, the EEPROM was, was blank, for some reason. I thought it was a bit strange. So I just thought, I was just looking at the diagram, trying to figure out what's going on, and trying to figure out what it, it would relate to, and... The EEPROM's on the same bus as the main processor ICs on the other board, so they're all in parallel together, basically. It's not the other devices, because the rest of the unit's working, so I know it's not the other end of the bus. There has to be something here. When I know the EEPROM read, um, it's a, it's a bit of mystery. Anyway, I looked at board layouts, and the bloody thing's in backwards. So when I got it, the EEPROM was in backwards. Oh, so I would have been putting the thing back in again the same way every time, the way I took it out originally, thinking that that was the correct way around. Turns out, no it wasn't. The board layout shows a notch at this end, which means that's pin 1. And the thing was in the other way around the notch at that end. So, now, it boots up. I don't know if it's dead, I don't know, I have to check that, but, you know. It at least now is correct. Unbelievable. Duh. Who the hell did that? Someone's taking chips out and putting them in backwards. <sighs> Incredible. Uh, it just sort of... Anyway, so that might be the end of that problem. So what I'm going to have to do now, obviously, because this chip's been in backwards and powered up a few times, only, although only briefly, I'm going to have to reread it and see if it still works. If it works, then yay. Whether the GPRB actually works, so I've got no way of testing that. Well, I do have some gear, but I've never used it. Anyway progress it might be just about done make sure you subscribe give us a thumbs up click the bell icon and that sort of stuff you know if you want to see my videos make sure you subscribe especially if you've not been here before if you've already subscribed don't click subscribe because otherwise you unsubscribe you don't do that you only want to subscribe good night okay following good because i'm not so today i spent ages trying to get this computer onto the network uh, i hate pcs i really do they always drive me nuts this machine, plug a USB drive into it. Won't recognise USB drive. It recognises plugged in, change drivers, delete the drivers, reinstall drivers. Still no USB drive. I don't know, I could never get it working. But one of the other PCs here could see this machine on the network and vice versa, so I could communicate between those two. But neither of the PCs will communicate with my Mac, even though it's all set up for it and it used to work like a month ago. Anyway, go figure. Spent ages, spent like four hours just trying to get a file onto this machine. So anyway, that's my ranting. So what I've done today is I've got the Probe Express, which is for the Batronics programmer, which this software is not great on here. It's got lots of bugs, it goes slow and anyway, it worked. So what I've done is I've programmed EEPROMs. I've got some EEPROMs turned up in the mailbag, which you hear. I have this many bad EEPROMs. Right, some of these are from the Dactron issue, where the thing was plugged in backwards. Thank you very much whoever did that. Because that cost me probably three EEPROMs just doing that. And some of these EEPROMs I got were also bad. This one here, which I took out of the LS101 and put into the other unit, um, is bad because, yeah, it, because it was in backwards originally. Anyway, so that's cost me you know, a fair bit of money in EEPROMs. Um, luckily I've still got six left, which may or may not be any good, I don't know. Anyway, it's been one of those days. So what I've done now is I've programmed the 1986 firmware, which is on the EV blog, onto the EEPROMs. They're now installed in both the Datron units, because both Datrons had no GPIB um, EEPROM function. Yeah. Anyway, so I'll try it out in a second, I'll power it up and, and make sure it's actually powered properly. 
So for information about this, the 1985 firmware that's in both of my Datrons, that you know, they're like a day apart, the main digital board firmware on the M1830 and 35, they're all exactly the same as the 1986 firmware on the EV blog forum, which is the 040386. All right, so there's a bit of a confirmation there. So luckily, that 96 firmware had the EEPROM for the um, GPIB board there as well. So I've used that code to rewrite the ones for the, my two units. So fingers crossed those will be right, but I've got no way of testing them. Well, I don't have a GPIB set up here. I do have a cable, but I've never used it. I don't know how to use it. Um, so as far as checking functionality, uh, I don't know. Maybe one day I'll dig into it. It's just been a bit of a nightmare between the software being a little bit slow, the EEPROM issues, you know, some EEPROMs working, some not. I when, when the pins are bent, I just strained it, just a fraction, just touched it and a pin went ping, fell off. It's like, oh, great, that's one of these new ones that just arrived. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I didn't even try that one because there's no pin now. So yes, it's been a bit of a mission. Um, I say I spent four hours just trying to get the files, the EEPROM files, onto this machine so I could do it. Um, I almost up resorted to uploading the files to a website and then downloading them again here because this has internet access, that's why. It just can't share files properly. You know, you've got a couple here. But yeah, anyway. It's been a pain. Alright, moment of truth. Let's power this thing up and see if it's actually going to boot okay with the new EEPROM. I really hope so. <laughs> Ready? Yay! It works. And yes, the cable is plugged in the other side. <laughs> that's a relief. Um, okay, that's good. So I'm happy with that then. I think I've solved all the problems. I think it's done. I think. I'm eh, not sure about this type of ranges. I think they're alright. Yeah, anyway. Okay, excellent. So there we go, one successful repair. I'm happy about that. So that's that unit done, I think. Don't think I've missed anything. I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. Um, so that's that video series completed. Hope you found that interesting. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe and that sort of stuff. Now there is still the other unit to do. Right? I've got the 1062 LS101, which I've still got to finish fixing, which you haven't really seen yet, I don't think, actually. I don't think I've shown you any of these. Only arriving in mailbag. So... I can use the learnings I made from this on the LS101. I've obviously done some stuff on it already and done some repairs on it already, which are very similar to this one. So I've done all those kinds of things. But the learnings are, are very interesting. So that's that unit done. I'm going to do the LS101 repair. That's a bit different. I'll some different issues on that one. So make sure you check out that series as well. I've done a playlist for this Datron. So any videos apart from Datron will be inside the Datron playlist. Okay, so if you want to look at the whole lot in one go, there'll be a playlist. That's probably at the end of the video, actually. If you look at the very end, there'll be like a, a card over there, something popular, or maybe just here, which shows the playlist. So make sure you check that out if you want to see the whole lot. So any files related to the repair are on my Patreon as well. So I've put up the um, all the firmware files, the service manuals, that kind of stuff. I, when, you, when I do repairs like this, any kind of test gear repairs, when I put the videos on Patreon, which I release them early to my Patreons, they get to see them earlier, maybe up to two weeks early, depends on how busy I am. All the files for the repair, where possible, I'll put them with it, anything relevant, like the service manuals, data sheets, um, in this case, firmware, anything like that. I'll try and put those with the video files on Patreon. So if you're getting really stuck and you can't find the things you need to do to do your repairs on one of these units, my Patreon has it, but you have to become a Patreon to see it. You don't have to pay much, it could even be a dollar a month or whatever it is, whatever minimum it happens to be when you go to sign up. Even if you support me for one month, that's worth the money information that's in those <laughs> files I've got on there anyway. Up to you. So, they are available on the internet, they are out there, which is how I found them. But if you can't find them for whatever reason, who knows, maybe this is, you're viewing this video in five years time or something and they're gone. They're on my Patreon, so I've got a copy. That's what I always do. And also, thanks to my Patreon supporters. Who made it possible to do this because the money I got from Patreon and from the sponsorships from PCB Way and from my Banggood sales and I've got my affiliate agreement there so I'll get a commission for sales on Banggood and AliExpress. All this contributed to me buying this piece of test gear 
and the other unit as well, the LS101. That income I got from that led me to buy this to do content for the channel. So thank you for everyone that supports me financially with paying Patreon or buying things through Banggood or whatever. And if you don't want to financially contribute, that's fine. Just give me a thumbs up on a video. That's a contribution. Sharing a video is a contribution. Having a comment in below, you know, just have a chat in the comments. Post a comment. That is a contribution. All those little things will help my channel to grow and help other people to see it. So it also helps other people out, hopefully. So anyway, I'm waffling enough. Make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon. Very important things. And um, give us a thumbs up. Always give me a thumbs up if you uh, like the videos I do. Pretty happy with this one. This has definitely come out quite nice. Daily love 30 voltages. Catch you later. Bye.